So hello my friends, Devon Lennox here, Photography PX. In today's video, I'm gonna walk you guys through how to use frequency separation in Beautify. All right, so here we are, Adobe Photoshop. We are using the Beautify panel, and I'm going to show you guys uh, how to use this, uh, this action in the panel for the maximum results. And when I say frequency separation, this is the tool that we'll be using and right now I just want to show you guys a before and after so you guys can see what we'll do. And then what I'm gonna do now is delete that and we're going to start from square one. So now we're gonna start from square one. And uh, first things first, this is gonna require that you have the Beautify panel installed. And I do wanna say as a preface as well, I am using a Wacom Intuos Pro uh, medium tablet right here. Uh, this is right next to my laptop. And uh, I have some shortcuts keys that are um, that should still be configured. I'm on a different side of my my operating system here, but uh, the shortcut keys that should be kind of configured. Um, so I will be using a stylus and the Intuos Pro uh, as opposed to using my uh, my keyboard and my mouse for this purpose, just because I want to kind of brush and have it um, be smoothly uh, kind of added, and uh, I want the uh, the adjustments I make to be more natural. I don't want them to be 100% and very hard edges. So first things first, uh, we're gonna click the frequency separation action. Um, it is. It doesn't matter whether your background is unnamed um, and locked, it's going to automatically apply the technique and the action to the specific background layer that you have. Um, and it comes up with a pop-up saying, brush on the layer to apply the effect. Use the layer opacity to adjust the intensity. So essentially what you're gonna do, and this is really uh, the, the basic foundation of how to use Beautify for all of the application um, or actions that are in here and all the sub sections of Beautify is that you're going to basically paint with a brush, a uh, black or white brush to reveal or hide um, the action and the effect that it's going to actually apply onto your image. So it simplifies the process of frequency separation quite a bit, it's just basically to uh, just brushing. Um, it's very, very simple. So. Uh, what we're gonna do, that's gonna cycle my layers. Okay, the actions are a little bit different. So I'm gonna just be adjusting my brush size here that you guys can see. I'm gonna be doing that on the Wacom tablet. And then I will also be uh, zooming and scrolling using the Wacom tablet as well, which is, I just did that, just an example. Um, I do have the hand tool automatically configured as well, which is just a push of the button. So essentially what you're gonna do is that you're going to select the layer here, this layer mask, and you're gonna be using a white, a primary brush here and we're going to set that to 100 percent and um, all you're going to do is brush on to the areas um, using the brush tool over here b for the brush tool ideally you want to be using a soft brush um, any one of these is fine where the hardness is down to zero percent and then you're going to adjust the size accordingly so that you can uh, not have the effect spill over to other areas that you don't want the frequency separation to apply to. And you're simply just going to brush on. Um, so again, I will be changing the, my brush size and I will just be brushing on. And um, by default, uh, since I'm using the Wacom tablet, it doesn't do 100% flow or opacity. Um, based on the pressure sensitivity that I brush onto, it's gonna change how much the effect actually applies. So uh, if you're using a mouse and keyboard here, I would suggest that you set the flow down to 15, 25%, and then gradually build up the effect so you can have a more smooth transition as you're applying it. Alternatively, you could leave it at 100% and uh, then just reduce the uh, the actual group's opacity uh, from 50%, you can reduce that down to 25%. But uh, I'm just going to use the Wacom tablet for this process, and uh, we will go from there. Did it just reapply the whole layer? Uh, oh, it applied the sharpness layer. I'm gonna delete that. I didn't mean to click that. Um, okay, but anyways, we're gonna just, I'm gonna mute that one, and we're just gonna continue painting on, and then you'll see how, how much easier it is to do frequent separation. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this tutorial right now uh, is because I'm, I haven't done any videos so far on frequency separation and, and advanced retouching techniques, but I want to do a comparison between Beautify's frequency separation versus me doing it manually and slaving away um, to really compare the differences. So you can see how much that softened that area right there. And then you can just basically paint on these areas 
Now there are a multitude of different techniques that we will ultimately use here to get rid of some of these particular blemishes, but frequency separation comes down to as easy as this and then applying the effect multiple times. Um, I will apply the effect twice so you guys can see what it actually does, but uh, we'll do that. Okay, so something like this and we've hit all the areas and we'll do a little before and after comparison and see how much that's removed. And we'll, I'm gonna go down here on just on the chest and I won't go any further than that. Uh, you get the general idea of just kind of brushing on here and then just uh, changing the opacity. So I'm gonna walk you guys through as well what happens if you increase or decrease the opacity. So this is 0% opacity on the group, about 20%, 50% roughly, 50%, 75%, and then 100%. You'll just notice the skin just gets softer and softer and softer, um, and it gets you that more plastic, robotic, I mean, maybe not plastic, but that dull kind of effect. So I'll zoom in a little bit closer and you can see exactly what it's doing. So that's about 60%, it's about 50%, 25%, give or take, and then 0%. So 100, let's do zero versus 100, quite a big difference, yes? and then 0% versus roughly 50%. Okay. And that right there is basic, the basic foundation of how you apply frequency separation. Um, now for me, what I do personally to get it into a situation where it doesn't look quite as uh, robotic, first and foremost, um, I use a Wacom tablet so I can have pressure sensitive, uh, a pressure sensitive mask. Um, but then outside of that as well, I, I do multiple uh, amounts of these effects in, in a variety of different areas. So I will add another frequency separation action. To do that, you will have to click the background layer and then hit frequency separation, and then allow the action to run. Um, it will just do its surface blur and it'll do a couple other things, sharpening, it'll apply a, um, a mask invert and a couple other things that it'll do. Um, but uh, as this kind of goes through, I, I, I apply it selectively in multiple areas so that it doesn't, it's not like just the same amount in or across the entire face. I actually use it multiple times and I, I apply it selectively. So I'm gonna just show you guys ag again, just in, in one go here, uh, where I would apply it as a second, a second go around. So I would leave this at 50% give or take, um, depending on how much, how much pores and how much, um, I guess how much texture I want to remove really um, and then I would apply it again as needed in certain areas and I will show you the combination of what it's actually going to do. And then outside of this, if you haven't seen the tutorial on adding, selectively adding grain, uh, once you kind of fix a lot of these blemishes, whether you use frequency separation, you don't, but uh, once you do flex, fix the blemishes and you can get the skin where it's nice and evenly toned, at that point you can go ahead and add grain and you can get a lot of that texture back that you've lost in the process of doing this, depending on what technique you happen to take advantage of. Um, this is using kind of surface blur, blur, so it's not necessarily the, uh, I would say the sexiest way to do this. It does get you a result for sure. Um, and this, this would look totally fine if, if printing, um, but as you get closer and closer to a print, you will start to see how blurry it is. So ultimately you do want to add some texture back. And that is in a future, or actually not a future, a video that we've published already on our channel if you want to see how to uh, do that. I'll post a link to do that in the uh, description below as, as a matter of fact, so you can see how to add grain. Uh, but those are just the, the areas that I would continue hitting. And at this point, now you have a nice foundation to then uh, add your own texture on top of that and, and then kind of continue going. I wouldn't just go over the entire face again in this, in, in this second instance of frequency separation. I would go in selective areas that I want to, uh, I want to fix and I want to further uh, basically blur and I want to remove some of the texture. Um, I wouldn't just go over the entire face. I would not duplicate this whole thing and then go over it. Uh, just again with the same exact uh, opacity and the same same brush strokes that wouldn't work So uh, I just apply it specifically in areas that I want to uh, kind of touch up And I think areas that have a little bit more texture that I want to uh, Make that a little more subtle and then from here we add some some noise and we kind of go on um, Yes, so I, I guess let me um, Show you guys the before and after I'm actually going to um, Move this and then let me group both of these so you can see the complete before and after. I'm gonna group these together 
And I'm also gonna get rid of the sharpness layer here. Uh, we don't need the sharpness layer. Yes, group and contents. And then now I can show you guys the full before and after. Um, and literally just doing those simple brush strokes. And then now that this is an entire group, you can also drop the group opacity down as needed to reduce the effect. So if you, if you thought it was too much when it was at 100%, um, before adding grain and all the other things, then uh, you can remove some of that by decreasing the opacity of the entire group as you feel uh, feel fit. And then this is the basic foundation. So in the next video that I'm, I'm going to release, I'm gonna compare this uh, to another tool here in Beautify, which is gonna call, it's called Plastic Skin. But I'm also gonna compare this to doing manual frequency separation, and I'll show you guys the comparison in the before and after. It's part of the reason why I'm doing this particular video. Um, but I hope you guys found value out of this. I hope it was helpful. I hope that uh, you have a better understanding of uh, how to apply the frequency separation, a little bit of the tips and tricks when it comes to uh, making sure the opacities are what you need them to be and not going too hard with it. It could get into a robotic um, kind of way really quickly. Um, but I'll do a future video with, with using frequency separation and, and some noise and you can, I'll show you guys how you can make it look very much uh, the same way as regular frequency separation. It's basically the same. Um, but I hope that added some, some value to you guys. I hope it helped out. And uh, definitely check out the link in the description below with the uh, additional tutorial on how to add noise if you're curious on how to do that. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope you found the contents of today's video insightful and added value to you. If you're new here, please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. Also, leave us a like and a comment in the description down below. Let us know if I overlooked something or I missed something covered in today's video. This is Devon Lennox. You know where to find us. Photography.